Do not forget my story, Senua. I am with you still. Out of hell you have come, and now find yourself in Midgard. The world of men. Do not think it any less dangerous for that. Your path has taken you far from home, across the boundless sea, and you must go on to the heart of this place. To the heart of man. You have seen how the Northmen journey out to conquer. And this is one of their lands. As icy dark as Niflheim, yet as fiery as Muspel. It has not long been claimed, and they try still to tame it. The Skald's verse speaks of a man called Grettir the Strong. A strange and bloody life he led. And it happened in this land you have come to. Listen to his story, Senua. For it may in some small way illuminate your own. The Skalds say that in Grettir's time, a nearby farm was plagued by hauntings. A shepherd called Glamour was killed by some evil force, found dead in the snow, bloated and black. His body could not be taken to burial, because he was held fast to the ground. So it was left. Three days after his death, the body was missing. The Skalds tell how the Revenant Glamour roamed the settlements, terrifying all those who lived there. Each one he killed, in turn, rose to walk beside him. Thus, evil begets evil. But the man Grettir was proud and overbearing, and thought the Droiger no match for his strength. say that Grettir fought and killed the Droiger Glamour. But not before Glamour had cursed him. His strength would be turned against him. His deeds bring death and exile. And he would be always before Grettir's eyes, making him afraid to be alone. He saw all sorts of phantoms wherever he looked. And thus, people who see things that aren't there are said to have glamour's eyes. The Skalds tell how in the time of Grettir's kinsman Thorgrim, there was a terrible famine. No crops could be grown, and the fish fled the nets. It lasted years, and the people were desperate. There was no respite even in spring, since terrible gales from the north would rise up and set in for weeks. This is a cold and unforgiving land, Sinua. In the time of famine, at the place known as Rifsker, Thorgrim found a huge finback whale, beached and dead. His neighbor, Thorfinn, had already found it and was in the process of flensing it. But Thorgrim claimed it as his own. Thorfinn said he would not give it up without a fight. If that's what you want, Thorgrim said, let it be so. And he launched a blow at Thorfinn, cutting off his head in one strike. The Skalds say that the neighbors fought, armed only with the knives and axes they had brought to cut up the whale, even picking out the whale ribs to beat down their enemies. Thorgrim's men had loaded their boats with whale meat, but as they went to leave, one of their opponents struck Thorgrim's brother a fatal blow. And this is how hunger fates desperate men to come to blows, striking out against one another to survive. The 
scalds speak of the time Grettir, traveling with some others, ran into rough weather and docked their boat on an island. They had not brought fire with them, and the merchants complained bitterly. Seeing a great fire blazing on the other side of the strait, Grettir said he would swim over to fetch it. He took off his clothes and struck out across the water, wearing nothing but a cloak. When Grettir came to the farm where the fire was burning, all was peaceful. By the time he reached them, his cloak was frozen stiff, and he looked like nothing more than some huge troll. The frightened farmhand struck out at him with the first things to hand, the burning logs from the fire. Grettir fought them off and got the fire he sought. But the sparks from the logs spread fire all over the house, and nobody survived the blaze. The Skalds say that Grettir swam back across the strait, keeping the fire safe from the water. His friends applauded Grettir's bravery, but when word spread about the massacre at the farm, people took against Grettir. Nobody wanted anything to do with him, and when the news reached the Althing in the summer, Grettir was pronounced an outlaw. All doors would hence be shut to him. The Skalds speak of how Grettir, now an outlaw, took rest on the island of Haramsoy with a man called Audun. Grettir saw a great yellow glow like a fire rising from the ground. Audun told him it was coming from the burial mound of Carr the Old, who ever since he died had haunted the island, and warned him to stay away. The Skalds say Grettir wanted the sword that was buried in Carr's howe, and would not be deterred from seeking it. He broke the mound open and started digging until he reached the timber props. By this time it was night. Audun warned him again not to continue, but Grettir threw down a rope and went inside the mound. No light penetrated it, and it reeked of death. But he persisted in exploring. Grettir found the sword he was seeking, Carr's loom, buried in the grave mound. He went to leave, but before he could reach the rope, something grabbed him from behind, and Grettir realized the mound dweller would not let his treasure go. The two fought ferociously until Grettir got the advantage and chopped off the Revenant's head. But Carr's loom would prove his undoing, fated to be the sword that killed him. The Skald's verse tells how Grettir made many enemies with his proud and overbearing nature. Always quick to anger, his strength and fighting prowess meant that even the most trivial of quarrels met a fatal end. The kinsmen of those he killed or maimed were angry, and because he was an outlaw, no one was allowed to help him. The outlaw Grettir fled to the island of Drangi. His enemies knew he was there, but he was still so strong and fierce Nobody could shift him. Thorbjorn, first among his foe, sent his foster mother to see Grettir. She was a Saithkona, and very wily. She enchanted a tree branch and sent it to wash up on Drangi. Grettir tried to cut it up for firewood, but his axe flew back and struck him in the leg. The wound blackened and festered, and Grettir feared his time was close. The Skalds say Grettir, wounded by Sather, was now so weak it was possible for his enemies to defeat him. Under cover of night, Thorbjorn and his men attacked his shelter. They tried to disarm him, 
but he clung so firmly to his sword, Kar's loom, that they had to cut off his arm to get it free. Then they used his sword to cut off his head, and the land's mightiest outlaw was dead. As the Droiger glamour had predicted, all Grettir's brave and fine deeds brought him misery. So fate makes prisoners of us all. But it was Grettir's nature that made him fight the Droiger. And Grettir's nature that led to blood feud and exile. So what is truly our prison, Senua? Is our path ordained, and we powerless to change it? Or do we blame uncertain powers for what we ourselves ordain? <laughs>